Hi, I'm Dr. Vasan Nagwekar, uh, presently talking to you all from uh, Neelavati Hospital. Good evening, everybody. I'm, going, I'm practicing as a consultant in infectious diseases at Neelavati Hospital. And today, I'm going to speak on awareness about and uh, whatever concerns about the coronavirus or the COVID-19, which has been uh, spreading. And I think there's a lot of panic in the country about this. So I'd like to clear a lot of your questions and doubts about COVID-19 or the coronavirus-19. So starting with, what do we know about coronavirus, its origin in the spread? So the coronavirus, uh, that is the COVID-19 or the novel coronavirus, why it is named as novel is because it is a new virus which is originated from the uh, Hubei province, from uh, the sea, uh, the, the, uh, the animal market from the Hubei, Hubei province from China and it originated in December 2019 but finally was diagnosed with sequencing in January 1st week and then now we are seeing that it has spread to more than uh, 80 to 85 countries across the world and uh, now the number of cases per se in Hubei China or outside China is decreasing whereas outside of China in fact the Europe, Italy, South, South Korea Iran, it is gradually increasing in numbers. You have to give the correct number of the number of cases as of now. I think there are more than 98,000 people who are affected and approximately I would say around 3,380 deaths which has occurred. Apart from China, the major countries which are affected are South Korea, then Italy, then Iran and uh, also Japan which has been uh, affected to a larger extent. So these are the countries from where it is originated. It is a new virus and that's why uh, the people are not having immunity to this virus and I think that's the reason why people are suffering, uh, you know, uh, more and well, more number of people are getting affected. What are the symptoms of the coronavirus? So I think uh, the question is what are the symptoms of the coronavirus or COVID-19? I would, I would rather say uh, coronavirus can be of two types. One is the one which keeps, you know, circulating in the community where, you know, we, all of us have been suffered. These are, that is a milder variety. But the one which is the novel or the new coronavirus, which is also called as SARS-2, which is circulating now, is, uh, is, is the COVID-19. And the symptoms, signs and symptoms of this would be basically severe body ache, fever, my, severe myalgia, muscle ache, throat pain or dryness of the mouth, cough and breathlessness and running mood. Some of the patients may have some loose motion or abdominal complaints. But these, if you, if I tell you this symptom, then all of you might say, you know, I've had this symptom a few days back or my son is having this symptom. That does, does it mean that, you know, you have, all your children have suffered from coronavirus? No. This COVID-19, we would say a person having COVID-19 or coronavirus, that is the SARS-2, which is the concern which is going on, only if the person has traveled to China, Hong Kong, Singapore, Japan, South Korea, Italy, France, and you know, a lot of these restricted countries where India has said, if you have traveled to these countries, and within 14 days of coming to India or travel to those countries, if you have these symptoms, possibly then you may be having a COVID-19 or alternative is possibly if you have all these symptoms and you have been in contact with anybody who has come from these countries and you develop symptoms that you may be having a COVID-19. Just because in India this routine influenza A, influenza B and rhinovirus and a lot of these viruses keep circulating. That does not mean that we have coronavirus. I think there should be a strong history. The symptoms of any this COVID-19 is same like any influenza virus. Only thing is this symptoms plus there should be a history of travel to all these major countries which have been the outbreak within 14 days of travel or if you have come in contact with anybody who has traveled to these countries and then you develop symptoms then possibly I am not saying you would be having coronavirus but I say that you should get tested or you should inform the medical authorities that I am having these symptoms. Do I am suffering from COVID-19 or coronavirus?
one of our viewers is asking people are saying that when summer set properly the heat will not let the virus survive please so, clarify i think as of now there is no clear uh, uh, there is no clarity about it because the virus has been there in countries where there is cold where there has been you know cold of climate as well as you know hotter climate but yes the there is i, I hope that uh, the virus wouldn't survive more than 35 degrees centigrade that is the hope but as of now there is no clarity on this about it i think we just have to wait and we hope for the best for this what are the symptoms of the coronavirus i think i just uh, spoke to you about the symptoms of coronavirus so that uh, fever cough breathlessness body ache dryness of mouth i think similar symptoms which like any influenza virus and how do we know if a person is suffering from coronavirus i think this question also i answered in my uh, when you asked me the symptom that anybody who has traveled to all these countries or if you have come into contact with uh, anybody who has traveled from these countries and if you have these influenza or flu like symptoms then you possibly may be thinking that uh, whether i have got a, a covid 19 or coronavirus right? uh, we have one of our viewers asking a question what tests can be done to detect the virus i think uh, so far the the test which is available in mumbai is at kasturba hospital only other other places in uh, maharashtra is at nib pune and i think government hospital at nagpur and it is a nasopharyngeal swab which they do for pcr test for coronavirus but it is not available in any of the private laboratories as of today maybe i think uh, later on maybe more lab would come in but as of now in mumbai it is at kasturba and i don't think you should just randomly go to check check your swab there unless i say there is a history of travel plus you develop the symptoms within 14 days of travel then only you maybe i would i'm not saying you should worry but you should just check whether uh, you got this virus or not uh, there is a fear in people if i get corona virus will i be serious what are the facts for this <sighs> okay so the question is whether if i get a corona virus i would say covid 19 right when the corona virus are you know uh, they are the uh, you know normally also you get corona virus but the covid 19 that is the sars 2 what we are talking about is is the one which say covid 19 if i get will i be serious to so the facts about that is whatever studies have been done we have shown that uh, out of 85% or 80 to 85% would have just milder symptoms just like any flu and would subside on its own without any intervention that means 80 to 85% of the people will just have mild symptoms which possibly you will not realize also that you had this covid 19 it would be a very very minor manifestation rest 15% of the people would have severe manifestation which will require possibly hospitalization and among the 15% who will require hospitalization i would say 6% approximately would require 5 to 6% would require to be have uh, requiring an intensive care that is icu care and among this 5 to 6% only 3% will require ventilator and among this 3% there will be mortality that means the death would be around 2 to 4% that means what does it mean is that there is a fear in the people that if i get a corona virus there is covid 19 am i going to die actually the chances of your dying is only 2 to 4% so 96% is that in fact 96% you will you know you will just 85% do you not realize only maybe 10% you will have some serious uh, illness but when you recover 2 to 4% of the people would die but again i am saying this if you say this number 2 to 4% possibly uh, may be still higher i think the number may be much lesser because if you see uh, in china if there are say or all, all over the world if there are 1 lakh people being tested among the 1 lakh being people being tested they are looking at the death rate of those people Uh, among the 1 lakh people approximately who are tested positive and in that we have found that the mortality or the death rate is around 2 to 4 percent average is 3 to 3.5% but there may be so many people in the community where they it would have affected and actually a um, lot of people must not have been tested also okay so if if you count those randomly lot of people who are not been tested who you know would develop minor symptoms and not go for testing i think the mortality rate would still come down to less than 2% or maybe lesser than that i think what we require to know about this uh, covid 19 is that it is a very contagious virus that means it will spread very fast from one person to other but it is not that 
life threatening yes it is 2 to 4% death rates have been reported but it is not that life threatening against those coronaviruses which or SARS-1 when we had in 2002 or 2003 that time the death rate or mortality of people who had this virus SARS-1 in 2002 or 2003 was around uh, 11% and in 2012 when we had the MERS that is the MERS go in the Middle East country the mortality among those people who had this MERS go was 34% so compared to that 2 to 4% is much less. I am not saying 2 to 4% is very good. Of course, it is bad for all those people who would get it or die. But yes, it is comparatively much lesser because people are just worried that if I get a COVID-19, will I die or will I become serious in the ICU? So the, chance, the percentage would be around 15% would become serious. And among the 15% who would become serious, I think 3 to 4% death rate would be there. But yes, I know that this 3 to 4% is also a concern. But the fear about that, if I got COVID-19 or coronavirus, which is circulating now across the world with pandemic, the mortality is around 2 to 4 percent. One of our viewers is asking, is there a treatment available for COVID in India? So, I think the, uh, as far as the treatment goes, it is only supportive line of treatment. And as I said in the uh, my talk, that 80 to 85 percent of the people will not require any treatment, they would recover on its own it's through their good immune system. Only 15 to 20 percent of them would require treatment that is only supportive line of treatment. It is not, there is, there is no specific antiviral as of now. There are a lot of rumors, a lot of uh, drugs being tested may or may not be beneficial. I'm not saying, you, uh, you know, but as of now, just like for swine flu, how we have the oseltam we eat, that way, we don't have a specific drug to say that it will kill this COVID-19 mm -hmm. as of now. There's a lot of supportive line of treatment which are available, but 85% of them would recover without any intervention. They would just have very minor symptoms. Any home remedies for treating COVID-19? I think uh, best is I think if you if you uh, if you diagnose as COVID-19, I think it's better to be isolated in hospital, whichever the government has uh, possibly designated. It's better uh, be observed in the hospital and rather than you know being at home as of now. Maybe in the future it may become more uh, you know more uh, endemic than a different story. But as of now, I think if somebody is, uh, I think I think anybody tested, government would see to it that that person is definitely uh, you know isolated in the hospital so that it doesn't spread in the community. So as far as if you are, it is the other way around that if I not travel to any of these countries. If I have not come in any contact with any of the people who are from these abroad countries and suppose if I get a cough, cold, flu, what should I do? I would say you should stay at home for at least two to three days or at least till 48 hours till you don't get fever and then only go to the offices or your you know colleges wherever. Best remedy is be at home and not spread to others where whatever the influenza, whatever the flu virus be. Okay, so that is the, I think best is to stay and uh, not go out. And main thing is, uh, you know, repeated hand washing would, uh, before you touch your face, nose, eyes, I think that's a good one. If you're getting, sent, you know, the hand sanitizer, good, which should be having at least 60 to 70 percent alcohol or simple soap and water is very good. I would say that's the best way to clean your hands before you touch your face, mask, nose, or even if you touch any of the surfaces before you touch your face or eyes or nose, which is a common habit of everybody, I think should be uh, washing your soap with hand with soap and water. Simple, when you're traveling in train, we catch handles, doors, all this. I would say before you touch your nose face there, see that you wash your hands to prevent because we don't know which, I'm not talking about whether these people may be COVID in the train, there may be a lot of these routine influenza viruses also which you, which you could get protected from. Uh if a person observe any of the symptoms, so which specialist should a person visit for such? I think uh, if there is a history, strong history of again travel, what I said to these countries, or if you come in contact, I think uh, you should just call up your doctor and ask him where I am being possibly maybe having this COVID-19, then the doctor will directly to direct you to Kasturba. Because in private labs or private hospitals, as of now, as of today, at this juncture, I don't think these tests are available. But if you are not travelling to any of these countries or not uh, being in touch with anybody and if you are developing simple flu-like symptoms, the best thing is you call up your doctor and take an appointment, wear a mask whenever you are going to his clinic 
or wherever you're going outside in the community so that whatever the virus be, you don't spread to others. That is a very, very important thing. You wear masks or whenever you're coughing, sneezing, please see that you use a handkerchief or if you're in a train, if you're crowded, not able to, uh, you know, use a handkerchief, at least use your shoulder. So that I think most important is prevent spreading in the community. If you're having whatever the flu may be, whether it's a COVID, I don't think COVID-19 is a, as of, uh, it's a concern, but not so much as of now. But the routine influenza flu viruses which are there in the community, I think at least that we should prevent spreading into the community and be staying at home if you're having fever and use at least handkerchief or if you have a mask when you're going out to a doctor or in the community, please wear your mask there. Otherwise, routine people, there's no recommendation to use a mask to prevent getting infected. I think masks are required for people who are sick and not for people who are not sick in the community. Can you also highlight some of the precautions can be taken in day-to-day -day life in the activities for yeah, viewers? Yeah, right. I think already I mentioned a few, but I will repeat it. First thing is, if you are having fever, cough, cold, please be at home. Don't go, get into the community or don't go to your office to prevent. Once you are not having any fever for 24 to 48 hours, then only join office. That will be a healthy practice. Second is, you know, uh, most important is hand hygiene. That is using uh, soap and water or alcohol, uh, hand rubs if there is available. Suppose if you are in the office, if you are touching table, chair, it's it's not possible that every time you will touch the table, you will keep going, washing your hands. But yes, see that before you touch your face, nose, wash your hands with soap and water. That is two. Three is, I think when you are coughing, sneezing outside, please have the habit of using a handkerchief uh, or at least use your shoulder so that it doesn't affect other people. I think these are simple and, you know, good healthy food. I mean, you have your food regularly, hydrate yourself well. I think these are standard practices which you should be doing round the clock throughout the lifetime. That, you know, having adequate good hygiene, uh, good diet on time and, you know, adequately getting hydrated. Thank you so much, Doctor, for your time and giving us your valuable inputs on the disease. That's it. Thank, okay. you. Thank you so much.